Alhamdulillah Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa jama'in Qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Wa qala shaytan Lama qudiyya al-amru Inna Allah wa'adakum wa'ad al-haq Wa wa'adtukum fa akhlaftukum Wa ma kana li alaykum min sultan Illa anja'artukum fa satabtum li فلا تلوموني ولوموا أنفسكم ما أنا بمصريخكم وما أنتم بمصريخي إني كفرت بما أشرتمون من قبل إن الظالمين لهم عذاب أليم. This is ayah number twenty-two from Surah Ibrahim. Allah سبحانه وتعالى in this ayah he tells us he relates to us a discussion. And in a a dialogue that will take place after not only the day of judgment, but after the decision has been passed down, has been made by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and people have fallen into whatever was their final abode. Either people, the people of paradise, have been entered into Jannah. The people of the fire of hell have been entered into the fire of hell. And the decision and the hisab, the judgment, the accounting, the accounting of the people has been completed. After that time, Hassan al Basri he very eloquently he kind of explains the situation. He paints a picture to explain what exactly happens, and he says that after all the decision has been made, as Allah Himself He says. And the people of who have disobeyed Allah and who have incurred the wrath and the anger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, they have been put into the fire of hell. Amongst them, Shaytan, he will stand. And Hasan Basri says he will stand like a khatib, like he will give khutbah to all of his people now. And he will stand on a mimbar made of fire, and he will address the people. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala relates to us what Shaytan will say to all these people. Basically, you could almost call them his people, like Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala refers to as his bish shaytan. These are his people. These are the people who listen to shaytan, who followed in his footsteps, let themselves get distracted from by shaytan and fell into his traps. So these will be these people here, and shaytan will address these people and he will say, "Waqal shaytan." Allah says, "Shaytan will say to them, 'Lama qudi al amr.'" After the decision has been made, after all the accounting of the people has been completed, Inna Allah wa adakum wa adal haq. Allah made a promise to you. Allah had promised you certain things. Allah had asked from you for certain things. Allah subhanahu wa taala demanded, commanded you to do certain things. But He had promised you certain rewards based on what He was asking from you. Wa adal haq. But Allah's promise was the truth. And they will have come to have realized that by now. That will be very, very apparent. It will be obvious that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's promise to them was 100 percent the truth. That there would be a life after death. That they would face their deeds in the grave, and that they would be resurrected on the day of judgment, and that they would be accounted for the way they had lived their lives. That there would be a paradise. That there would be a hell. That the blessings of Allah would be in Jannah. That the punishment of Allah would be in the fire of hell. All of these promises that were made, all of those came true. Exactly as Allah has said it. This Shaytan said, "In Allah wa adakum wa adal haq." Allah made you a promise, but His promise was true. Wa wa adakum. I also made you a promise. I also promised you certain things. Fa akhlaftukum. But I lied to you. I broke my promise to you. I also told you that don't do this, don't do that. You know, don't follow Deen. Don't practice Sunnah. Don't pray your Salah right now. And you need to do business like this. And you need to hang out with those people. And you need to have these type of illicit relationships, and so on and so forth. You need to cheat that person. You need to slap that person. You need to curse this person. All of these things. I also told you, and I promise you certain things. If you do it like this, you'll make more money. You'll gain more respectability. You'll end up better. You'll have a happy life. You'll never regret it. But I broke my promise to you. I lied to you. My promises were not true. Everything that I told you to do ended with you suffering. And the greatest suffering of all, look where you are today. So he will establish this fact. He'll clearly state, "Look, I lied to you. 
Don't come expecting anything from me. Don't make any demands of me. Don't say what happened. The people in Jannah will, they'll, they'll demand from shaitan. Well, you're our leader. You promised us certain things. Where are they? Look at those people in Jannah. They're living it up. Inna al-mutsaqeena fi jannati huwa uyum. They have they have fruits and they have the luscious uh, animals of Jannah to eat and they have these beautiful beddings and beautiful companions and fragrances and luxuries and rest and peace and harmony and tranquility. They have all these things. What about us? Where's our share? What do we get? We listened to you. We followed you. Where's, where's your promises? So you tell them, listen, I don't want anyone coming and bothering me, okay? Hmm. I know I made certain promises to you, but for akhlaftuk. I was lying. So that's it. I have nothing to give to you. No refunds, no exchanges. And then he'll say, when those people, when he'll tell this to the people, the people will say, oh, you ruined us. You did this to us. Look what you did to us. It's all your fault. And they'll scream and they'll yell. They'll even yell to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They'll scream. Oh Allah, look, shaitan did this to us. It's not my fault, Ya Allah. Take me out of here. I don't belong in here. Shaitan did this. He did this. So shaitan will say, وَمَا كَانَ لِيَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانِ Hey, hold on. Wait a second. I didn't force you to do anything. مَا كَانَ لِيَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانِ I, I, I didn't have the ability to make you do something. Allah says Himself in Surah Al-Hijr that in ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan illa man itzabaka min al-ghawin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that my slaves laysa laka alayhim sultan You do not have any type of a control over them. You don't have a control over them. You can't make them do something. He's addressing shaitan. In, this, in Surah Al-Hijr, like a lot of the places in the Qur'an, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the incident where He commanded the malaika to make sujood, and shaitan, He disobeyed. And then the certain dialogue takes place, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, condemns the shaitan, and discards him, and removes him from his mercy. So in Surah Al-Hijr, Allah tells shaitan, when He says, that, I'm going to lead all of them astray. I'm going to come at them from all angles. Another surah in the Quran, Allah says, I'll come from them from the front, from behind, from the right, from the left. I'll come from them at all angles. Come at them from all angles. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, In ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan. You can't control them. Illa, except, manitzaba'aka min al ghawin Except for those lost people, those straying, wandering people, who will follow you of their own accord, of their own choice. Those are the people that will be following you. Those people who choose to follow you. So shaitan doesn't have any type of a control. And he'll establish that. You say, I didn't. I didn't force you to. مَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ sultan. I couldn't force you. I didn't have the ability to. إِلَّا أَنْ دَعَوْتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي Except for one thing. دَعَوْتُكُمْ I give you da'wah. No, we use the word da'wah. We use it for a very positive sense, of course, rightfully so. But shaitan is saying, I also was giving you da'wah. I was also inviting you in the other direction. I just told you, hey, why don't you think about this? Look at that. Take this into consideration. That'd be really nice. That'd be very fun. That'd be really interesting. I just invited you. I kind of persuaded you. فَاسْتَجَبَتُمْ لِي you were the ones who responded to me. You're the ones who responded to me. I was just inviting you. When somebody invites you, you don't have to go. You don't have to go. Like they teach the children, just say no. About drugs, right? Just say no. They teach the kids, say no to drugs. People will offer. It's your job to say no. Somebody can't take the drugs and then he gets caught and says, Oh, it's not my fault. He offered them to me. Well, you were supposed to say no. Same thing. We teach our children these basic lessons. And we find them to be so rudimentary, so simple, so elementary. But we forget these lessons ourselves. And this, what I want to explain one thing here is, shaitan is extremely, <coughs> shaitan is extremely cunning and smart. In the sense that he doesn't use a very, you know, obvious method in trying to dissuade us from doing good. 
When you stand up, when you get ready to perform salah, you look at your watch, you look at your clock, you say, okay, it's 1.45 or 1.30, it's time for salat al duha I need to pray my salah. And you stand up and you go make wudu. Shaitan at that time doesn't come and say, hey, don't pray, what's wrong with you? Why are you gonna pray? What's the point of praying? Because that's very transparent, that's very obvious. So shaitan doesn't do that. What does shaitan do? Shaitan will say, listen, if you want to perform salah, you need to do it properly. And right now, you need to make those two phone calls and you need to respond to that email. And look, you're gonna go pray salah right now and the whole time you're gonna be thinking about that email and that phone call. Why don't you go ahead and get all of that out of the way? Take care of all of those things and then alhamdulillah, you can completely free yourself, completely relax yourself and then you can pray properly. So you say, oh man, that makes a lot of sense. So you get on the phone, and one call leads to another call, to another call, and then one email leads to another email, to checking that website, to checking this, to checking that. <coughs> and before you know it, it's 5 o'clock, 5.30, Salat al Asr. Well. <coughs> so this is the approach that Shaitan uses. He doesn't come directly, he doesn't use something very transparent, very obvious. He uses his little tricks, and tries to dissuade us. At that time, we have to be able to be strong, set our priorities right, not listen, not fall prey to these tricks. And that's where the guidance of the Qur'an and the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sunnah of the Prophet is our, is our best guide. It's very clear what we need to do. Just follow that. Do exactly that. And you'll always be on the safe side. So shaitan will say, I just invited you. You're the one who responded. You're the one who answered me. فَلَا تَلُومُونِي وَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ So don't curse me, don't blame me. Blame yourselves. This is something very interesting Shaitan is saying here. Of course he's saying after now it's when it's too late to benefit those people, but the, the blessing is, the beauty, the miracle of the Qur'an is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is delivering it to us right here. Shaitan will say this then, but Allah delivered, to, delivered it to us now and here in the Qur'an. Blame yourselves. We have to learn to hold ourselves accountable. We can't stop, we can't keep pointing the finger at other people. This is a very important lesson from this ayah. We always blame somebody else for our shortcomings. Oh brother, you know, we don't pray in the masjid because of they built the masjid over there. So, that's, that's you have to pray. They built the masjid over there, and, or that brother also comes to pray over there, I don't like him. And this imam, he prays like this, I'm not comfortable. Or it's always something, it's always somebody else's fault. It's always somebody else's fault. It's never my fault. That's what we have to learn to do. This is what Allah is teaching us in the Quran. Blame yourself. Hold yourself accountable. Even on a bigger scale, in a bigger picture, I don't want to take the discussion in that direction, but even when we talk about the pitiful state of the Ummah, oh, it's all this country's fault, and that, nation, that nation's fault, and this people's fault. We're always blaming others. My, my fault. What about us? How much of it is our own fault? Even parents, their children go, start running amok. Oh, it's the schools, it's television, it's this, it's their friends, it's the neighborhoods, it's America. Always blaming somebody. What about me? How much of it am I responsible for? So hold yourself accountable, blame yourself. فَلَا تَلُوْمُنِي وَلُوْمُمْ Shaitan is saying, don't blame me, blame yourselves. مَا أَنَا بِمُسْرِخِكُمْ وَمَا أَنْتُمْ بِمُسْرِخِ That I cannot come to your aid in this situation, nor can you come to my aid. Saying, look, we're both in trouble. The word surkha, uh, that's used here, the word surkha, it means to scream very, very loudly. When somebody is facing a uh, uh, when somebody is facing a very very difficult situation, when somebody is in some very very urgent deep problem, when somebody screams really really loudly and extends their voice, prolongs their screaming, that's called surha, like an extreme type of screaming. Like if you saw somebody on fire, how you would scream, or if your house was on fire, how you would scream, things like that. You saw you see a snake, how you would scream. So this type of a screaming. But it means here in the Arabic language, the eloquence of it is, it's used also to mean that 
Why would somebody scream like that? They scream like that when they require some urgent help. They require some emergency aid. So here, a lot, this word is being used in the context of, I cannot come to your aid. We're in a very, very urgent, desperate situation. Shaitan is telling them, both of us are sitting here in the fire of hell. But I can't you, I can you can't, I cannot get you out of it, and you can't get me out of this here. مَا أَنَا بِمُسْرِخِكُمْ وَمَا أَنْتُمْ بِمُسْرِخِكُمْ إِنِّي كَفَرْتُ بِمَا أَشْرَقْتُمُونِ مِنْ قَبْلِ And here, Shaitan does something else. This is kind of what you could almost call the human side of Shaitan. In the sense of how every person is going to be trying to get themselves out of trouble somehow. How everyone is going to try to deflect the blame and deflect the, the punishment that comes along with it on the Day of Judgment. Shaitan is doing the same thing here. He'll say, إِنِّي كَفَرْتُ بِمَا شُرْتُمُنِي مِنْ قَبْلِ I completely reject what you are associating with me, what you associated with me before. The association that you made with me before in the dunya, in the life of the world, I completely reject it, I disavow it, I have no knowledge of it, I had nothing to do with it. That you, what, what, how do we associate with shaitan? How did people associate with shaitan in the dunya? That they obeyed shaitan instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah was deserving of their obedience, but they chose to obey shaitan. They chose to obey shaitan over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So shaitan will say, I had nothing to do with that. Inni kafartu. He uses very strong words. He uses ta'keed. Inni kafartu. Very strong word. I completely reject. Completely reject any type of an association that you had with me in the life of the dunya. And shaitan, Allah mentions this in different places in the Quran, وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَكْفُرُونَ بِشِرْكِكُمْ The things that people worship other than Allah and obey other than Allah, they'll completely disassociate themselves from those people who are worshiping them or obeying them on the Day of Judgment. Even in, uh, even in Surah Al-Hashr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَمَثَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِذْ قَالَ لِلْإِنسَانِ اُكْفُرْ just like the shaitan, when he tells the human being, do kufr. He tells him, do kufr. Disbelieve in Allah. Disobey Allah. Be ungrateful to Allah. فَلَمَّا كَفَرَ As soon as the human being does disobey, or is ungrateful to Allah, then what does shaitan do? إِنِّي بَرِيُّ مِنْكِ He says, I have nothing to do with you anymore. I have nothing to do with you anymore. And he goes on to say, إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهَ رَبَ الْعَالَمِينَ I fear Allah. So I have nothing to do with you. So this is shaitan's tactic. He won't stick with somebody. He's not a loyal friend, a loyal companion. So in this dunya we have to see who are we aligning ourselves with. If we align ourselves with shaitan, he'll abandon us. He won't be there for us. But Allah and His Prophet our good deeds, these things will remain with us. Our iman, this is what will remain with us. This is what will help us on that day. So shaitan says, إِنِّي كَفَرْتُ بِمَا أَشْرَقْتُمُونِ مِنْ قَبْلِ I completely disassociate myself from those things that you associate to me in the life of the world. إِنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ And finally, the extremely painful punishment of the life of the hereafter will be for the people who disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the word Allah uses is ظَالِمِينَ وَظُلْمٌ The word ظُلْمٌ we often say it's like oppression. Actually, the, what the word dhul means, misappropriation. To misappropriate something is dhul. And the reason why oppression is also called dhul, because you are misappropriating the rights of people. So, like in the Quran, Luqman tells his son, the shirk is the greatest form of misappropriation. Your devotion, your dedication, your worship, your obedience is only for Allah. But when you do shirk, when you give that to someone else, this is the greatest form of misappropriation. So similarly, our obedience, our allegiance, our loyalty is due to Allah. But when we misappropriate that, and we direct that to shaitan, and we obey him, then what ends up happening? The most painful punishment will be for these people, Allah says, on the Day of Judgment. And then the last thing I want to mention here in relation to the month of Ramadan is, we know the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ tells us, the shayateen are chained during the month of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps them away from us, so that they can't distract us from focusing on what we need to do during the month of Ramadan. But the question often still comes up, we still see, forget about even non-Muslims, we even see Muslims doing evil during this month. 
And if the shay- shayateen are chained up, then where is this evil coming from? Once again, remember in this ayah Allah says, shaitan will say, فَلَا تَلُومُنِي Don't blame me. لُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Blame yourselves. Because what happens is that evil, it also starts to manifest itself within us. And we see that very apparent in the month of Ramadan. There's no shayateen, but people are still doing evil, still committing sins. Who is to blame there? The shayateen are chained up. We can only blame ourselves. So the month of Ramadan reminds us of this. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to practice. Let's make an effort inshaAllah to correct ourselves, to fight these attacks from the shaitan, not fall into his traps, to practice the guidance of the Qur'an and the, from the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to practice everything that's been said and heard. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanakallah wa bihamdik, nashhadu wa la ilaha illa anta nasaqfiruka wa natubu.